Hello, I'm Jacqueline Bettedeport, Chair of the Cobb County Democratic Committee. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Cobb Democrats have gone virtual to bring the candidates to voters through a series of virtual forums and candidate interviews. Today, we are speaking with Gregory Gilstrap, a candidate for Cobb County Sheriff. Gregory is running against two other Democratic candidates in the June 9th primary election. Welcome, Gregory, and thank you for joining us. So Gregory, can you take a few minutes to introduce yourself to voters? Uh, let us know your background and experience and why you decided to run for sheriff. Yes, first of all, a good sheriff is one that has integrity, compassion, lead by an example, and, and experience. I have a combined of 38 years of law enforcement and professional services experience. <clears throat> Currently, I'm a police officer for Carver's College Police Department. I was employed at Mohawk College for 10 years and was promoted to Lieutenant Watch Commander of Day Shift. My responsibility was to oversee the day shift operation, manage the personnel, payroll, formulate a plan of action, training, investigate incidents, and review reports, and submit daily shift reports to the police. I was employed at the DeKalb County Sheriff's Office for 10 years and was promoted to Sergeant at HF. My responsibilities were the same as Mohawk's. In addition, I was employed at the Witcher Arts Center Atlanta for 14 years. I was promoted to Assistant Director of Protection Service. My responsibilities entail administration of security personnel and services. I was accountable for the safety and security of staff students of the Atlanta College of Arts and patrons of the Atlanta, Atlanta Symphony Orchestra, High Museum staff and props, and the Alliance Theater staff and actors, which included planning and coordination of security management and safety for over 5,000 patrons visited the Wichita Arts Center daily. Thank you. So brief, can you briefly describe the roles, responsibilities, and jurisdiction unique to the Sheriff's Department as opposed to, say, the Cobb County Police Department? The role of the Sheriff's Department is to enforce orders provided by the court and house detainees. The jurisdiction of the Sheriff's Office is in the county for which it is located. The sheriff is the chief law enforcement officer in the county. Responsibilities, some of the responsibility of the sheriff office include, but not limited to, executing and processing warrants, eviction, punishment, summons for trial jurors and grand jurors, execution of retention and protective orders, maintaining order in the courtroom, maintain order at places holding election, perform criminal backgrounds checks for employment as required by law, to house, feed, and care all persons charged with violation of county ordinance, maintain record of all persons committed to the jail, to transport incarcerate prison to the jail, set policy, approve and monitor the transaction of bonding contracts. And last but not least, to exercise the same duties, power, and arrest authority within the municipalities or in the unincorporated area of the county. So what should voters be looking for in your background, experience, character, and temperament to evaluate you as a candidate for sheriff? Uh, in short, what makes for a good sheriff? What's made for a good sheriff is the, is the sheriff has to lead by an example. They can have compassion for one. And then aside from the um, adult detention center, can you name three important changes you put in motion during the first hundred days of your administration? First, I will restore and maintain the public trust by being visible in the community. I will meet with the chief of police within 
the county to build a relationship and discuss concerns within the jurisdiction. jurisdiction. Last but not least, I will meet with the Board of Commissioners to build a relationship. And then dealing with the adult detention center, there's been a lot um, talked about of late, um, written about uh, the conditions at the adult detention center. We've had a number of inmate deaths, uh, lockdowns, um, and just general um, uh, bad conditions at that adult detention center. What would you do to improve conditions there? First, first I would do, I would review the personnel files of employees. As I will make the necessary change to ensure they are in compliance with policy and proceed. Any officer or staff who violate department or county policy or engage in inappropriate conduct will be disciplined and or terminated. I would appoint an overseer to monitor and evaluate the medical staff operation procedures and license and report in the deficiencies. I will make sure the detainee are receiving their medication and allowed to seek treatment in the affirmative. I propose the following to ensure the safety and the health of the detainee with mental illness and special needs. Mental health evaluation by trained professionals provide a diagnostic education and medication social worker to provide post-release for the community-based treatment, officer to receive training in crisis de-escalation and simple for effective engagement with those presenting and of diagnosed. Last but not least, if a level of care is higher than staff, place detainee on a 1013 for evaluation to a mental health facility. I will allow clergy to provide support to the detainee. So the sheriff, the current sheriff, um, has um, subscribed, um, if you will, to the 287G program. I think viewers could benefit uh, from a brief description of that program, uh, what it is and, and how the sheriff's involved in that. And then if you could tell us what, uh, whether you're for or against that program and why. I do not support the 287G because they discriminate and separate family. Just imagine a child crying, clenching her mother hand. Then the child is pulled away, placed in a holding shelter without her mom and to comfort. You see, I I'm a family. I have three daughters, and I could just imagine if my children was taken away from us, separating us. No, I do not. Okay. Do you see the need for a major restructuring of the sheriff's department, including changes in staff and personnel, or is it just a matter of new leadership? Well, before I make any drastic decision regarding restructuring of the sheriff's office, we'll assess the current staff and personnel to determine the best outcome for the health and safety of the sheriff department. So the sheriff is the CEO of a large organization with 700 employees and a budget of approximately $89 million. What experience do you have prepares you to manage an organization of that magnitude? Well, while employed at the Woodrow Park Center, I assist with planning the fiscal budget, which allocate funds to security staff, uniform, training, outside law enforcement salary, security equipment for the facilities, travel expense. So recognizing the vast majority of law enforcement officers are dedicated, conscientious public servants, uh, there are times when some may act inappropriately and have, as we've seen um, through the years. So they endanger those around them and erode public trust. 
how would you handle staff who violate the public trust and do not follow authorized policies and procedures? I would place the staff on administrative leave and, and, and would give them due process, rebuttal, the allegation, to rebuttal the allegation through fourth, upon completion of the third investigation, staff will undergo a disciplinary hearing by the sheriff office to determine the process, to determine the procedure of action to take. The action could stem from a letter of reprimand, demotion, suspension, or termination. And the community is concerned about a lack of transparency emanating from Sheriff Warren and the department over which he presides particularly with respect to operations at the adult detention center and now in the uh, time of COVID-19 over public health protocols and um, the health, health conditions uh, for inmates at that prison. So what would you do as sheriff to increase transparency in general and improve communication with the community the sheriff serves? I would allow the media into the facility. I will allow family members to voice their concerns and immediately take appropriate action to resolve the issue. I will allow detainees to voice concerns to family members without retaliation. I will investigate all allegations of the misconduct officer. Okay, well that wraps up the question and answer. Um, I'm going to give you a few minutes to make a closing statement and add any additional comments uh, you'd like to make. Thank you. Well, first of all, I would like to thank God for placing me back on the ballot and for guiding me through this election for five times. I want to thank the Democratic Party for allowing this interview for the citizens to learn about the candidates. I would like to say to the voters of Cobb County that if I'm elected as sheriff of Cobb County, I can assure you three things. One, that if it's broken as sheriff, I'll fix it. Is it wrong? I will stand against it, but if it's fair, I stand forward. So I ask the voters of Cobb County on June the 9th, 2020, to vote for Gregory B. Gilsberg as sheriff of Cobb County. You can go to my website for further information, www.gilsgrafforsheriff.com, or my Facebook, Gilsgraf for Sheriff Adelk. Thank you. So thank you, Gregory Gilstrap. On behalf of the Cobb Democrats, I'd like to thank you for running and wish you all the best. Um, and thank you for going virtual with us to speak to the Cobb voters. Uh, we appreciate that. So in closing, I'd like to urge everyone to vote by absentee ballot. Vote from the safety and comfort of your own home. You do not have to risk your health or that of your loved ones to have your voice be heard for this primary election. For more details, see our webpage, cobdemocrats.org. Again, thank you for joining us. Take care and stay safe. Have a good night. Thank you.